Okay, listeners, well, joining us on the show today, we've got Rock Royalty. We've got a very special guest. We've got Nina Gordon, who most of you would know from the band Veruca Salt. Welcome to the program, Nina. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Now, Nina, things have been going great guns here for you guys at the moment. You're about to embark on an Australian tour. You've been selling out shows and having to add extra shows all along the way. How does it make you feel to know that you've got so many Australian fans? You know, it is, it is really, it's really something. It's, um, it's pretty thrilling, you know, um, just that, that those, those fans have hung on as long as they have and waited for us to come back. And, um, we can't wait to see all of them. Honestly, we, we have always had, um, a love affair with Australia. So, um, and we know that Australians love their rock and, um, and we are very grateful. Yeah. Well, you said about a great love affair with Australia. It seems that Australia's also had a love affair with Veruca Salt as well, because your big hit, Seether, we went to number six on one of the first Triple J Hottest 100s, which is about the highest accolade you can get um, in Australian music. Did you know that that happened? And if so, how were you first told that you guys had gone number six? You know, I don't know that we ever really knew that that statistic or that number you know I think we just we were aware that and it's odd because you know we didn't tour we didn't go to Australia on our first album yeah we went to Australia after after the second full length album and um I don't know I don't know why it wasn't deemed um feasible at that time for us to come over but if if Cedar had done so well I'm surprised that we didn't make it over there then but anyway no I don't think I knew specifically but um or any of us did maybe our manager did maybe our record company did I don't know um but we did know that we had a lot of fans over there and uh we really enjoyed touring there when we did yeah, and what's some of your fondest moments of touring in Australia, and, and what's our audiences like here compared to audiences right around the world? Truthfully, um, I remember feeling like the fans were way more knowledgeable than um, than they are in the States. I mean, I hate to say this because we just, you know, enjoyed a really great tour in, in the States, but... Um, most other places besides the states <laughs> are great. Like touring fans are great, and that's not to say that our U.S. fans aren't great because they are. But um, back in the day, we definitely saw a big difference between just the level of sort of the depth that Australian fans went into with the lyrics, and they just really knew um, knew a lot about us. And I, I would say fondest memories were really just meeting great um great fans particularly girls um young teenage girls who would come to our shows and um you know would tell us that they'd picked up guitars because of us and all of that and it was all very flattering and um we're looking forward to seeing how those girls turned out when we come (laughs) when we come back (laughs) all these years later yeah, well, I know for me, I was a young teenager, and now I'm in my 30s, I'm sorry to say, when um, when I first saw you guys. So what what is the secret to the longevity um, for you in the music industry? Because we see so many young musicians these days come onto the scene and then burn out. What do you put down to the secret of your longevity in the music industry? Well, I mean, we did burn out. Uh, we did burn out, and then we came back. It was like, you know, the phoenix rising from the ashes. We um, we took a really long hiatus, and Louise and I, you know, had a very long hiatus from one another. We both made some music, you know, and put out albums on our own with other musicians, but um, we were always really deep down missing each other and missing that chemistry that we share together and um and so we feel really excited and honored to have that back and to be able to sort of have a second um a second chance so yeah. um we we really did burn out in the worst way and then and then now luckily have a, have another chance yeah and how does it feel being back with veruca salt and you've just done a tour as you mentioned did you feel really re-energized Totally, totally. Yep. It's it's 
great. I mean, you know, as I said, there's a chemistry um, in bands. You know, bands are like families, and, um, you know, there's, there can be a lot of friction, a lot of tension, and then there's also this incredible electric energy, and um, it's really great to be a part of that again. You know, all four of us who were originally in Veruca Salt, who started it and made the name, you know, we are all back together again, and um, it's really great. It's sort of like finding your long lost relatives, you know, after years of not seeing each other. So um, it's it's pretty great, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I can't say enough great things about that. Yeah, and you just mentioned family there as well. Of course, you're a mom this time around while you've been touring. What's it like touring and juggling family life at the same time? You know, it is not easy. Um, in the States, we were able to do like a week away and then a week back because we all have young children. So, um, you know, it's hard to stay away for long periods of time. Um, and quite frankly, Australia will be, that will be the longest we've ever been away. We're, we're gone for about two weeks and that's a long time to be away from young children when you're a mommy. So, um, we'll see how we do. We may be, you know, we may be a mess by the end by that last show in Perth, but, um, (laughs) but I think, um, I think we're going to do just fine. You know, what we found in leaving, leaving for tour this, this past, uh, July, June and July was, you know, at the beginning we thought, huh, this is going to be really hard. And, and then like a few days into it, we're like, this is amazing. We get to sleep all we want. We can nap in the afternoon. (laughs) We can like do whatever we want. And, um, by the last day of tour, it was sort of like, wow, I'm like a 1% mommy right now. I came into the tour 99% and every day I've dwindled down and now I'm like, mostly musician and performer and least of all mommy so it's great to have little little spurts you know little short stints and then be able to come back to the family and it would be great to go out and tour for long you know for long periods of time it'd be great to do what the pixies did you know and just go away for years and years on end but uh obviously that's a, a luxury we can't really afford we have young children and we want to be with our families yeah. And what can your fans expect to see at the Veruca Salt shows this time around? Will you be doing a lot of new material, but will you also be mixing in some of the older material as well, or how's it going to work? I think we're going to do a lot of a lot of old material. I think, you know, it is, it is uh, the 20-year anniversary of our first album, American Size. We will play many songs from that album. We'll play some songs from our EP. We'll play some songs from... Um, from Eight Arms to Hold You, we'll play a couple of new songs, and you know, we have a whole album's worth of material that we've recorded and are almost ready to release, and uh, so we want to play all these new songs, but we kind of feel like it's not fair, you know, because when I go see a show, I like to know most of the songs, you know, I like to, as a fan, I like to hear what I what I know, and it's always fun to hear one or two songs you don't know, but you don't want to hear too many, because yeah. I don't know, it can be, yeah, and so so we're going to play a lot of songs that, that people know and um, are expecting to hear, and then, you know, just enough to keep it exciting. Yeah, now you just mentioned a new album, can you tell us a little bit about what some of the inspirations have been while you've been putting together this album, and when we might be able to expect to hear it? Um, well, I wonder, um, in Australia, I don't know what, I, I mean, so far we, we have, um, we, like I said, we've recorded 11 songs. We probably have two more to finish up, and then, um, and then we're going to put the record out. So we're hoping it'll be our spring, um, your autumn, and um, and inspiration-wise, I mean, I think what initially happened was when we all got back together, we thought, oh, we'll play one show. It'll be great. We'll do like a little victory lap or something, and then um, and then we'll go back to our lives. But it became really clear really quickly that we wanted to continue writing and we were writing and we were inspiring each other to continue writing again. And um, and so a lot of the songs end up being, you know, extremely autobiographical about the band, about the breakup, about the reunion, about all of that stuff. Um, it's much less about relationships and love relationships and much more about this band and so in, in that respect it is kind of a concept 
album. Um, but I think that's that term is thrown around a little too much. But but in a way, it kind of is because it really is about this this experience that we have gone through together, all of us, all four of us. Wow. Well, I can't wait to um, hear it. Also, I can't wait to see you guys play live. We're almost out of time, but I wanted to end on uh, one question. Going back to Seether 20 years later, and this is a track that still on our station quite often makes top 50 lists when we do top 50 alternative songs of all time. When you actually sat down and wrote Seether and then went and recorded it, did you ever have an inkling that this song was going to become so big? Absolutely not. I mean, I, when I wrote that song, I brought it into the band, and I was so afraid to play it for them because I thought they were going to think it was. Really, I, I just thought they would think it was too poppy and like silly or something. Like I had no idea. And then we recorded it, and we loved it. But we never imagined anyone would hear it outside of our families and our friends, our boyfriends. You know, we had no idea. Um, you know, we hoped, I suppose, but I don't think we ever even dared to imagine. So it's it's really uh, pretty thrilling to to think about it and to hear from you that that that's the case. You know, that it is it is still played over there and so far from home. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, Nina, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. It's been an absolute privilege to talk to you, and we all can't wait until you're down here in Australia so we can head out and see you guys play live again. Thank you so much. We can't wait to get over there.